on the Mark Loeffler experience. I'm trying to be more like a news anchor. We're gonna read the news. So while I was away traveling in New Zealand and doing some various other things, a lot of things happened. We got Bill 23, which if you just wanna read it, it is the More Homes Built Faster Act, okay? It is good to old 75 pages or so, 78 pages of fun. Honestly, I have read about 10 pages of it. Basically what it promises to do is to cut the red tape. We're gonna get into that in a minute. I've been reading top stories that obviously Toronto is now the biggest bubble in the world for real estate has been for years or well, at least Vancouver and other places have been for years. Stress test didn't test for this. Inflation numbers came out. We had a half point rise, which was actually a bit of a shock. Jeez, I mean, somebody's gonna let me know down below what I didn't remember in those two weeks. RBC, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Forgot about that. We had record employment, 108,000 people more employed in October than September. Fall oh, we had the fall economic statement from the government. So there was a lot of things happening. So let's break that down. Let's talk about number one first is that interest rate change, 0.5%. Everybody and their brother was expecting 0.75. Everybody and their brother was expecting 0.75. We didn't get it, which means that, well, a couple things. They think inflation is now more under control, which you know we can see on our good old trade and economics. It went up 0.1. So it's not rising as fast and it's falling some month over month. So it's pretty steady. So they're like, okay, well, we've kind of tamed that a little bit. So we get the inflation numbers for October. I think they come out later today by the time the video is out. So we should see, are they right? Are they wrong? Obviously we've had a, a, a number of uh, big things happening in the tech world regarding talk, like the job numbers where Twitter late is, firing half its staff, uh, Facebook, all these big companies are laying off staff. And yeah, I mean, here's the thing, when they were used to making all this money, they kind of became like governments. It became fat and bloated. And in Twitter's case, I don't think they were profitable. So they were just borrowing more and more money, like the government, to pay for their expenses. And now that, you know, it's owned by a private individual, He's now the CEO of that company as well. I think he's five, CEOs of five companies now. Anyways, he can cut costs. I know that, uh, yeah, and it's good. That, I mean, that's all oh, that happened too. Geez, so much happened in the couple of weeks that I've been away. It was it Oscar Wilde who said his, his, his insult was, may we live in interesting times? Well, guys, we are living in interesting times right now. I believe there's opportunity out there. If you're looking where that opportunity is, is could be a little bit confusing. I still think there's opportunity in the multifamily world. I still think there's some chance to, to be buying flips. I mean, you got to buy them right though, right? Like if you're buying them right and, you know, turning them, I think you're going to do okay. Again, one person's opinion on YouTube that I'm, and I'm actively looking for these things. I think I'm going to change the strategy out in Alberta a little bit. Stay tuned for that. I'm going to look at a couple of buildings this week that I'm going to run some numbers on. And I'm going to show you what I'm thinking instead of the financing we've been doing to the finance we're going to be going to. I mean, here's the thing. So 108,000 people were now employed extra and we're still at the same unemployment rate. So that tells me that we, I don't, doesn't feel like we've changed anything, but real growth of the wages did go up 6%. So that means we're seeing inflationary pressures in wages, which will now lead to more price hikes and more inflation. That's what happens. That's what this spiral goes to. So now they're what obviously with raising interest rates, they're trying to get people to stop using their homes like a piggy bank to buy everything. Right. Ah, oh, and here's that like. Canada's real estate wealth boom is over and now the most vulnerable advanced economy. So Canada relies on, for 9% of its GDP on housing. That's the most in the world. And honestly, like that, yeah, people have been using that money to go you know, renovate their house. This is going to change. People are going to, obviously, they're going to renovate less, which then employs fewer people in construction and banking. <laughs> 
And yeah, they're going to, I don't know. I, I, I'm pulling back on expenditure right now. It's just natural. I'm sitting on, I think, you know, like a lot of people sitting on some cash, waiting for some better deals. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm actively making offers out there. And if I get them, great. If I don't, I'm okay with that too. What else do we have? So yeah, we had interest rates. Oh, let's talk about, oh, let's talk about this Build Faster Act. Let's get into that. Okay, so we talked interest rates, we talked employment. By the way, I think employment, so employment is a lagging indicator of the economy, by the way. I believe we're gonna see in first couple quarters of next year some pretty good losses and that inter, that uh, employment, employment rate going up. Just gonna say that right now. First, second, into the third quarter. So basically what this does is it promises to cut the red tape. Is it a good idea? I truly believe it's a good idea that you know basically they've stopped inclusion inclusionary zoning or they're trying to and what they're trying to do is get more what it reads to me as they're trying to get more mid-level um housing so townhouses row houses up to 10 units you won't need to have a site plan approval which i don't know if you ever tried to get a site plan approval could take I don't know, six months to two years, and then they're gonna change this and that and do this. So it's gonna allow smaller developers to go out and be able to develop quicker. Obviously still gonna meet the building code, still need to be Terry on approved, all that fun stuff. But it's also gonna let somebody build a medium size rental property. At, till this point, it didn't make sense to build an eight unit. There was no point to building an eight unit. The costs were unbelievable. You wouldn't get your money back, you know, so you could build smaller. But now with this, this might actually encourage people to build those eight to 10 unit buildings that we see out there everywhere and build a nice three, four story walk up, stick frame construction and not be that expensive to build. Because if you're building a huge, obviously tower, it's more expensive per square foot than building a stick built four to five story building. This is what it seems to be trying to help. If you ever give somebody power over you and then you try to take that power away, do you think that they're just gonna give it up gladly? These cities, Toronto in particular, makes a crap ton of money off development charges. So what are they gonna have to do well, they're going to have to find that money somewhere because they use that money to run the city. So if they use that money to run the city, they might have to, they're going to probably have to raise property taxes. And I'm just going to tell you the mill rate or the, like what you pay on a value in Toronto is way lower than what you pay anywhere else. Toronto has some of the lowest mill rates out of any city in Ontario. It's actually yeah, I mean, they're obviously robbing Peter to pay Paul. They have their um, land transfer tax, which they're going to take a hit on now because, again, less real estate is transacting and for lower prices. If they can't charge development charges, which, to be honest with you, builders that slow down anyways, they cancel projects because, number one, they couldn't get inventory. They couldn't get supplies. Number two, interest rates are rising. They don't know what the future holds in terms of pricing. So, therefore, they're just like, oh, we'll just wait and see what happens. But where's the city? So the city's going to go and they're going to raise property taxes. Because, again, I in, in my opinion, they weren't sustainable. Yet, they got to find it somewhere. And will they take this to court? Will they fight this? They might do. Because, again, they're taking away power that they want to have. They want to have the ability to say this and do this. And, and have this pet project over here. And, and yeah, it, it, it's... You know what? It'll be interesting. Will this get more homes built? And will they get fast, built faster? I think so. Will that have the intended consequences that the Ford government would like? I mean, again, we're $1.5 million home dollars. That would be easy. Uh, 1.5 million homes short in Ontario. And this is why we see that Toronto is so overvalued because if you want to buy something, you have very little to choose from. We live in interesting times. Comment down below, will more home built faster act work? 
Why? Why not? Just don't say no, it won't work. And But I want an actual reason. Let's have a talk down in the comment section below. Have a great day. Our next investor meetup is November the 28th. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you there at Caro. It should be new and reinvented by then. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later.